Even though three out of four Americans eat out once a week, a staggering 30% of Americans aren't making reservations. Why? Last year alone, six out of 10 restaurants reported hangups. That means someone called the restaurant in the middle of a reservation that got flustered and they hung up. They're intimidated by the process or they don't have the resources to make that call. Those people on the other end of the line, you know, those people have families. I've been making reservations since I was a preteen and it's really exciting for me to share the knowledge that I've garnered with you. My name's Kate Berlant. I'm Kate Berlant and I'm gonna teach and you- And I'm gonna teach you- How to make a reservation. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm curious, how many of you have made reservations? Yeah, it's pretty common, right? We think, oh, that's nothing, that's easy. How about for up to five people? Don't feel bad, that's normal. Up to 10? Wow, someone doesn't need a teacher, maybe. Although I doubt that. What city were you in? Uh, Cleveland. Call me when it's New York, when it's LA, when it's Chicago, when it's San Francisco, right? 10 people, that's impressive though. It's a great place to start. It's a great base onto which to build information. My largest was 12. I did a Mother's Day brunch for 12 people in San Francisco on a Saturday. And I won't even tell you the name of the restaurant because you'd fall to your knees. I personally prefer a landline. I think it creates a certain formality that a lot of hosts respond to. You can even try to work in the fact that you're on a landline into the conversation. You can say, oh, you know, I called earlier on my cell phone, but the reception was poor, but now I'm on a landline and the call is secure. Lisa. Hi, <laughs> it's Kate. How are you, honey? Oh God, you're gonna kill me, but do you have anything tonight for two at around seven? I'm the worst. I hate me. Oh my God. No. She's such a bitch. I can do 7.45. Now you're really gonna hate me. Is the patio open? I would die without you. See you tonight, babe. Listen to me. I had to eat at that restaurant every single week for almost two years to build that relationship. But now, I practically own the place. It's an amazing life I've built for myself. I, I've had them come back to the kitchen. I met the, I've met the chef. The chef looks at me and goes, thank you. And I go, no, thank you. And next thing you know, booths, booths, opening up. It's happening for me. Ring, ring. Hello, the Trotteria. Do you guys have anything for Saturday around noon? You know, I'm fully booked until 9.30. Would that work for you? No. Okay, no problem. If they can't accommodate your table request, ask about the bar. Sit at the bar. It's its own ecosystem, it's its own world. It's very fulfilling. Ring, ring, ring. Platters. Hello. I would like to make a reservation for four. PM, four people. Four people? You can, what do I do? Hang on. Okay, bye. Give your information up top. Date, time, party size. Boom, boom, boom. Go, right out of the gate. Okay. Ring, ring. Hello, the door. Do you have vegetarian options? A diet preference is not something you need to bother your host with. That's your business. Do your research online. And of course, the vegetarian options. It's 2019. The pros of having that relationship with the host, taking that time, making those sacrifices, you will get an appetizer sent over. You will get a birthday dessert. It happens. People don't believe me, but it's true. One day, I hope that you'll have what I have. And I believe you'll get there, I do. I'm texting, I'm emailing, I'm following up. Hey, I wanna double back again. Oh, someone in our group, you know, has hearing loss. Can we be seated away from the music? My dad has hearing loss, so um, to be able to seat him away from the speaker was really cool. 